Well, 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 it's a Wednesday, and uh, this is what we do here on this channel. We make sure that you're updated on everything when it comes to sports in Ghana and outside of it as well. Always put that short code there somewhere. It's 1760 as we get interactive. And we ask you, as Ghana gets ready to play her very first uh, tournament in beach soccer, it's a World Cup qualifier, and the stakes are very, very high. Ghana begins a campaign uh, against the likes of uh, Morocco, who are the host of the tournament against um, Senegal and, of course, Madagascar. And this is surely a tall order for the beach soccer team of Ghana because um, if they're able to go through in this tournament, then the World Cup qualification is certain. So how well would you expect Ghana to perform at the uh, Beach Soccer World Cup, which begins uh, later today in Morocco? We'll be going on the phone line later in the show to talk to our man, George Addo Jr., who is there in um, Morocco, uh, El Jadida to be specific. And uh, he is there. He'll be bringing you all the updates from uh, the camp of uh, Team Ghana as uh, the team gets ready to play beach soccer against uh, host Morocco. Surely a tall order indeed, but of course, it is a big stepping stone for Ghana when it comes to beach soccer. Of course, we'll be also looking ahead to the uh, Cowbell Bike Tour, the 2013 edition of the Cowbell Bike Tour, where, of course, um, on 27th of May, everybody just begins, and the excitement will begin. We'll be bringing you updates. And, of course, the defending champion has been talking tough ahead of this and he's also been very very modest about his expectations ahead of this uh, big one itself 13 days of intense competition and of course at the end of the day one champion will emerge we'll see how all of that turns out here on the show as well we'll be taking you outside of ghana where of course um many other things are happening of course uh, Andy Murray has had to pull out of the French Open after an injury he sustained at the Italian Open tournament. And uh, we'll also be bringing you an exclusive interview with uh, the Ochihine, as Osaji for Amoitia for opinion, who talks about his sporting life. And also, of course, there'll be that show comes up on sports uh, on this channel, on the Joy Sports channel soon. So uh, it's a packed show. We'll be telling you what's uh, been happening in football. Of course, uh, a board member of Accra Hearts of Oak uh, talking about hooliganism as well. So there is a lot on the show to expect later today. We'll be looking at uh, highlights from golf as well. And we'll also be looking at what is happening in football, especially as seasons round up in Europe. Uh, teams and players are making major, major moves. You stay with us in a bit. We'll be going to the newspapers. But tell me how well you expect Team Ghana to perform at the Beach Soccer Championship, the African version, which will be a World Cup qualifier for the next World Cup to be held in Tahiti in a few months' time. You stay tuned. This is Sports Today on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. Well, there is also a lot to look forward to. Christian Achu winning the uh, league title with uh, FC Porto uh, there in Portugal, uh, celebrating it there indeed. And of course, uh, we'll be talking about how uh, a three nation tournament, which was supposed to precede some qualifiers for the next Chan tournament, has been uh, cancelled. So uh, the local Black Stars team has to make uh, alternative arrangements uh, in that regard. We'll be covering all those other stories and more. But right now, I'm just asking you what kind of performance you're expecting from the uh, National Beach Soccer Team of Ghana as they go into their very first major international competition, which is a World Cup qualifier for the next uh, FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup, uh, which will be played in Tahiti. You send a text message, 1760 it is, and there's only 30 Ghana pesos. Let's go to the newspapers now. And um, I have in front of me the graphic sports newspaper, which we always use to start this segment. And um, it has... A big picture of Mourinho waving a Chelsea flag. And it says, Mourinho free to join Chelsea. There we are. Mourinho is uh, free to join Chelsea. So uh, after the confirmation of his exit by uh, Florentino Perez, the president of Real Madrid, Mourinho is now free. A lot of speculation that he is gravitating towards Chelsea one more time in his very illustrious career. Of course, Derek Boateng has signed for Fulham. And uh, he heads to the English Premier League. And also, Mahatma Otu finally put pen to paper to extend his stay at Accra Hearts of Oak one more season. What kind of magic can Mahatma Otu do? Send a text message. Tell me about it. So this is the front page of the Graphic Sports newspaper. And uh, on the Lifestyle page, it's rather interesting. It says, time to chill. 
But before we go to the uh, lifestyle page, um, there is some commentary on... Um, There's some commentary on J.A. Entry, who is uh, a legend in athletics. And uh, this was written by Rosalind Amu. And uh, let me just uh, go through uh, the, the lead, and that's it, on the lower part of the features page of the Graphic Sports uh, newspaper. J.A. Entry, the forgotten hero. So there's also a picture of J.A. Entry at his residence. And of course, on the upper part of the page, the to the point column with Nana Ampoma says, time for Africa to rebuild, to build on World Cup success. And of course, we go to that feature on J.A. Entry, which says, uh, 41 years after helping Ghana to win her first athletics medal, uh, J.A. Entry, one of the quartet who won bronze in the 4x440 yards event, is still waiting to be recognized by the nation. A uh, rather interesting piece that put together by uh, Rosalind Amon. You'd want to grab a copy of the Graphic Sports and uh, take a look at that as well. And it's now time to chill uh, off-season for uh, some players. Uh, of course, the leagues are going on break, major leagues are uh, going um, to a halt in Europe. And of course, there, Emmanuel Shei Adebayo, Lionel Messi, Robin Van Persie, after netting a 20th to earn Manchester United the 20th, you can definitely expect him to enjoy. Yuan Mata also up there. So it's time for relaxation. And uh, of course, legendary Chelsea player Frank Lampard also is featured there as well. So this is what we have on the lifestyle page of the Graphic Sports newspaper. Let's go into the center spread, and before that, there's also a feature on page 7, which said, Did Mourinho lose motivational drive? Because motivation for his players is one of the Portuguese man's major, major strengths. And of course, Phil Ball of ESPN is just asking the simple question, uh, whether... Jose Mourinho lost his drive. So these are scenes from the European leagues and how they all rounded up. Of course, um, Sir Alex Ferguson will be celebrated. Barcelona will enjoy that title glory there. And of course, Manchester City are thanking their fans for a fantastic season. They were unable to uh, retain the title, but well, it's been good for them. And some of the speculations along where Jose Mourinho is headed, is directed towards Manchester City, whose uh, manager, uh, Roberto Mancini, is also on his way out of the club. Of course, Mario Balotelli there, a victim of racist chance, which has uh, drawn for AS Roma some very, very unpleasant fines. is uh, 42,000, uh, in excess of 42,000 British pounds. And the fans of AS Roma will have to behave themselves. And uh, some part of uh, AS Roma's uh, home ground will have to be closed as well um, for one game next season. Also on the foreign news page, there's a strong Ghanaian presence expected in Europe next season. And you'd want to do an assessment of that. Pictures of um, the Black Stars trial of Emmanuel Ajimambedu, Kwejua Samoa. And, of course, Sule Ali Montari. Of course, there's a story of uh, Derek Boating, who has signed uh, with uh, Fulham a two-year deal. The Black Stars defender finally landing a place in English football. The IWAF Diamond League also is on, and uh, Richard... Riches Ross and Monzo will face off in New York. So Mourinho is free to join Chelsea. The Graphic Sports is featuring uh, Mourinho very, very prominently today. On the back page, of course, there is a picture of um, the signing ceremony where Mahatma Otu has committed to Accra Hearts of Oak for one more season. 
So, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo there. Mr. Frank Nelson in Wokolo, of course, uh, Mahatma Otu in a white T-shirt. And, of course, Hackman Edu, who's the acting chief executive of the club. So that's it for the Graphic Sports newspaper. There's a big picture, a family shot, uh, which is good for framing, of uh, the man, Kwejua Samoa, his wife, and his son. And this is a picture taken from the celebration of the Italian Serie A title. Great achievement indeed for Kwejua Samoa, following in the footsteps of ex-Black Stars captain Steven Apea. So uh, City want to fight Juve for Kwejua Samoa. Very unlikely that the player will move out of uh, Juventus or Italy anytime soon. So uh, it's a £30 million pound war. And um, there are many, many stories uh, inside in the inner page. And of course, uh, it's a family affair. Many, many families celebrating successes in their respective leagues and there it is on the center spread of the 90 minutes newspaper so there it is the 90 minutes newspaper you can grab a copy and uh Go more into detail in all, uh, on all these stories and more. So we will begin with uh, Beach Soccer. Remember, let your text messages come in and let's gauge your thoughts um, ahead of Ghana's uh, campaign in the African uh, Championship, the African Beach Soccer Championship, which is ongoing in Morocco. Ghana play host Morocco later today. And uh, we will reach uh, our man, George Addo Jr., on the phone for updates on how well to, uh, prepared uh, Team Ghana is to face the Moroccans and if there are any uh, challenges in camp you'd bring to us uh, on the show. So um, George Addo Jr. will join us uh, in a second on the show but also remember that we'll also be looking at how uh, Christian Achu has uh, clinched the title in, um, in Portugal and so uh, we'll be going uh, to talk about that story later on in the show. But right now we've got the man George Addo Jr. who's coming live from uh, El Jadida in Morocco. And uh, he's just joined us on the phone line. Thank you very much for joining us, George. Thank you very much, Nat. Great okay. to hear your voice. Yeah, okay. sure. And uh, how is Morocco treating you so far? Um, let me say it's not been bad. Uh, we struggled a bit with the food. Of course, uh, <laughs> you expect that. It's not the usual kinky, the usual rice. And so we're trying to get ourselves um, in tune. And also, the weather has been quite strange here. I tell you, yesterday it was 8 p.m. I couldn't believe it was 8 p.m. because... It looked like 4 p.m. in Ghana. The sun was so up, everything was so up here with 8 p.m. So we're just uh, in between. Uh, I think it's okay. We can't really complain. We are getting used to it, yeah. Now tell me about Team Ghana's preparations and how well psyched the team is, especially when they're going up against the hosts, who surely are favorites going into this opening game later today. I have to say that... Um, it, it's not been easy. Let me, let me start from the draw. It's not been easy because the draw yesterday was very, very critical. And I have to say that if you look at Group A and Group B, you want to say that we have to thank God maybe we are in Group A. In Group A, you have Morocco, you have Senegal, you have Madagascar, and you have Ghana. In Group A, Senegal have been to the World Cup before. Morocco have been to the World Cup before. Even Madagascar have a very fantastic record against beach soccer giants in Africa and Nigeria. So we want to say that we are lucky. Let's look at Group B. In Group B, it's even the worst case because you have Nigeria, you have Ivory Coast. Nigeria have won this competition four times. Ivory Coast have won it three times. Egypt have won it twice. And Libya have also been doing fantastic in that region. So pair the groups, we can say that at least we are lucky uh, to have Group A. And we were looking at our game against Morocco. Uh, everybody in the country here is talking about, well, Ghana, you know, Ghana. And when they mention Ghana, they talk about Samoa Jan. They're saying that we are debutants and they're going to beat us by six goals to nil. I've heard them running all the place, but our boys are getting themselves in shape. One of the crucial things that happened to the team, um, we have the head coach of the team join us. That's uh, John Contosau, who is a former coach of Portugal. And he took Portugal to the Beach Soccer World Cup in 2004. He's joined the team. He's been working, you know, side 
side with um, our coach, uh, Max Peglo, and they've been trying to put the boys in it. And before I said the challenge for the boys now is that what they were experiencing, you know, we have the league in Ghana, what we're experiencing in Ghana, we have more sand on our beaches than here. And not only that, the sand is also moist, so the ball moves quicker. So they have to try to adjust to it. So we are now midway, you know, and midway between the speed, you know, it's, it's faster than what's there. So they have to try to work on it. So yesterday on training, it was one of the things they had to work on, try and move with the pace, try and get used to it. But I have to say that um, they are trying their best and they're getting used to it. Right now the team is just relaxing and getting themselves ready for this all-important game against Morocco because not if we're able to pick the three points against Morocco, it will be very good because we know that Morocco and Senegal will clash in the next game, and that means that they, there's a possibility they can drop, and then we can pick a point against Madagascar, and we can qualify to the next stage of the competition. All right, uh, we will be coming to you uh, for some more updates. Uh, which other teams would you say look very likely to go through the group stage into the final stages? Um, of course, you cannot forget about Nigeria. Um, they have an outstanding record in this particular competition, and you, you, it actually goes to say they should be able to make it. But I expect a great fight from the other teams in Group B. The permutations is that Ivory Coast and Egypt will give Nigeria a lot of trouble, but they are very confident because they have been doing this for the last uh, eight years, nine years, always in the World Cup, so they're expecting to go through. In Group B, I'll be looking at Nigeria and Ivory Coast qualifying. But when you get into Group A, I want to pick one from uh, Morocco or Senegal, and I want to add Ghana to it, okay? So I'm hoping that even if we do bad, we should finish second in the group and at least move into uh, the semifinals. Remember that this eight-team uh, uh, tournament is only two that are going to qualify from it because once you get into the semifinals, if you win your game and get to the finals, then you have qualified for the World Cup. Only two teams are going. So I'm expecting to see a Ghana-Nigeria final. I hope I'm not being too patriotic, but that's what I'm expecting to see, Nat. All right, George, uh, thank you very much for your time this morning. We'll be coming to you for some more updates. George Addo Jr. is a Joy Sports correspondent uh, on beach soccer, and he is there in El Jadida in Morocco, where Ghana is playing a host Morocco later today. And, of course, uh, you'd expect uh, from a Ghanaian perspective that Ghana will be able to cause a major upset if it, that is possible. Send a text message, 1760. In a bit, we'll be sharing with all of you what other general thoughts are on this subject. And, uh, of course, we'll also uh, be talking about what is happening here on the local scene. Uh, in recent times, we've been talking uh, heavily about uh, how hooliganism is affecting the game and uh, clubs have been reacting to bans and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, bans and all of that that have been handed them by the Ghana FA. We'll be going into that subject in a bit. But let's take a look at uh, the arrival of the uh, national beach soccer team in uh, El Jadida in Morocco. <laughs> The beach soccer. So, well, that is the beach soccer ah, team. So well, yeah. I'll be just getting a hold onto the man who is a leader of delegation, Albert Frimpong. He's also been around here and ooh, it's really cold here. You know, the sun, the sun is making it look like uh, we should be feeling hot, but it's cold, humid, humid conditions. Now, I don't know, you haven't experienced in beach soccer. What does this mean to the game? You know, what sort of weather we experience? What does it mean to the game? But, um, this weather means a lot to us because we've been playing in the heat. So as it's cold now, Nothing short of victory is what I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. So you're expecting the team to do much better because of the conditions? Yes, I'm expecting much better performance from them. Yes. At least the sun will not be as hot as you know, we have back home. Mm. And obviously the team has arrived, we're getting ourselves ready. Um, how are you seeing the town? What are your expectations even before we get into the hotel? Um, so far, so far so good. I think the guys are relaxed, a little tired, yes, but um, you can see on their faces, they are really hungry. And the town is waiting for us and we are going to announce our presence here. We are uh, Team Ghana settling at their camp. Rather beautiful scenery there. And uh, this surely is going to be one big experience for uh, Team Ghana. The maiden experience for Team Ghana. And um, it will mean that uh, there will be a lot of stakes, uh, very, very big stakes in this competition.
and uh, this is the arena where the uh, tournament will be played. So uh, the team got in there for their very first training session to test, and they were told that the sand over there is less in the arena because of which uh, the ball moves faster. And uh, Coach Concesao there issuing out instructions to his players. And so it surely is going to be a tall order as home fans will be rooting for Morocco. And there it is, uh, the team trying its striking ability because eventually it's the goals that will count. And uh, a very important training session indeed for the team. Where Ghana will look forward to doing what for now is termed very impossible. And right where all the games will be taking place, you can see team currently having the practice. This is the grounds for the competition. But before we even talk about our team and what's happening, we want to talk to the head of organization, the head of competition for beach soccer worldwide. He is uh, Mr. Pep. We'll just be finding out from him a few things, you know, talking about beach soccer and everything that's happening in it. Um, we'll be looking at it from the African angle. Pep, what's up? Hello. How are you? Good. Good. As a, okay, uh, for me, the weather is quite chilly, but how do you see this weather? I mean, you are coming from Spain. How's the weather looking? Like? Yeah, the, no, the weather is it's, it's not bad, you know. It's not it's bad. You know, I'm coming right now. Actually, I'm coming from Italy because we had another event. Right. And before in Bahamas, so as you as you can realize, you know, beach soccer is not a stop. Never a stop. Never a stop. Let, let's talk about the game in Africa. I want to find out from you, um, how do you see the game in Africa? Improving? No, it's. I think that we have to do a lot of things, you know, in Africa, you know. However, we have to realize that as you come from Ghana, you know, Ghana is a newcomer here in the in the qualifier. We organize some events in. Uh, we already organize some events in, in in Africa. Actually, right now we have the Copa Lagos in Nigeria. We we organize as well this event in the qualifier in Morocco. We in the past we organize in South Africa. But the most important thing is that how the the countries are starting to develop and to practice in this sport. However, we are in the in the middle of the way, you know, we have to do a lot of work yet. Right, so the end of the training session and all is set for the game tomorrow against Morocco. But well, I cannot say all is done unless I've spoken to the coach. I want to find out from the coach how everything went. Coach, how did you see the training today? Uh, I think it's a good training. I, I believe it's, it's possible tomorrow uh, uh, the good game against the host country. Uh, I told the players the pressure is for Morocco because we play in your, in your home. Uh, and uh, Ghana is uh, not tight, so no, no need pressure for All right, so that was our man, uh, George Addo Jr. there, bringing you updates on the team's preparations, uh, preparations that were held uh, yesterday. And uh, stay tuned to Joy Sports, and of course, the Joy News Channel will be bringing you uh, some more exclusive interviews from the ongoing uh, African Beach Soccer Championship, a World Cup qualifier indeed. Uh, let's now take a listen to a board member of Accra Hearts of Oka, Frank Nelson, who's been talking about the worrying phenomenon of uh, crowd violence at our football centers and the need to uh, bring a stop to it. We played a match with Hazakas. We ran out of the stadium. I remember the Esipong with Hazakas. There Why did this, you run out of the stadium? There was this lady and the supporters, me and Sam. That's when I knew that some of Thomas Oka, and sorry, Niaibun, with his weight, he could have called run more than somebody <laughs> in 100 meters. He wow. took off. We were, run, we were running for step. We, we would just have to find a way to get out of the stadium, to get into the bus, and drove away as fast as possible. And I think people think about these issues, and people just talk about it on the radio. At the end of the day, we we'll find some committees, people taking a bag of rice, two gallons of oil to go and give a family because somebody has lost a breadwinner, somebody has lost a father, somebody has lost a mother, somebody has lost a brother. We never think that these things have great issues until it happens to you. But we'll tell you that people are lost 
breadwinners. People has people are fatherless today as we are talking because of this act. And I think it's something we should stamp out. We should stamp out and stamp it out completely because it's something we should not encourage. In Caladan, sometimes I remember sometimes in Caladan when we went to Caladan. That was that Caladan yeah. is the the, the uh, former the ground former for home Realtama. ground for Real yeah. Tamale United. You Before see people sharpening the their knife on the ground. You see people sharpening their knife coming close see. to you. Referees are scared. Referees cannot take decisions. Sometimes you don't blame them. They are human beings. It's not that the referee gets to the pitch to just take a biased decision. He does his job at the mouth because you are my home. You are my ground. You have every right to protect me. And if the referee gives a correct decision, the man does not want to understand. And you see a catalyst coming to you. What will you do as a referee? You want to protect your life? Your family has to enjoy you. So many referees have decided even to say, well, for refereeing, I think it's not the job we should do. So at a time, it will come that we'll find people who are referees who do not have the heart to referee a match. But because there's nobody there. The people who value their lives will quit because what do they gain? How much do you pay a referee to go and risk his life? You remember there's this match we played, I think it was with Chelsea, and there was this uh, disturbance in Ohinijan Stadium, and the, it was with my team, Akra so folk, mm. when a referee was approached and was attacked. And we made sure that we condemned it, we stood against it. I remember that day I went to the uh, Rich Hospital with uh, the FA president. We went around looking for the people who were involved. It was raining that night, but I made sure that I went with Christian Yantechi. We went to uh, Metro TV to be able to get the script and what is the people who were involved. We wanted to collect uh, the video clips on Metro to be able to find out the people who were involved in such incidents. And I think as managers of clubs, we stood against it, we wrote about it, we condemned it, and we said these are things we should not perpetuate. There's no need fighting for three points where people's life are involved. I will not just try to uh, risk a life because I want to make three points. For me, I think it's useless. Otherwise, we better stop football because if people have to die, it is institution. You cannot create any human being. But matches, you can replay. You can win next year. But if you kill somebody, can you replace that life? It's impossible. How much are you going to feel for family that you say you're going to encourage families that you are trying to give them because they lost somebody? But that's harm has been done. So what I'm saying that with institutions, clubs, I believe that we should be able to stand up, regardless who is involved. If it's Accra Sufu that is involved, we as managers in Accra Sufu, we should be able to stand up and say, look, our supporters have done wrong and they have done wrong. We stand by it and we want every punishment. Let follow by the punishment. If he has to affect the clubs, even if he has to go, that we have to lose points, not just same binding us from Ohinijam, for instance, but in Accra. So if we have to be deducted, points has to be deducted. Let our points be deducted. If we have to go to relegation, because of that, let every club, if you have to go to relegation, go. Then the supporters will know that this is their art has taken people to this level. It is I not see. just crazy, because it's people's life. We should stop being biased by because of, I mean, all of them, are, not just because of, I think it's maybe financial issues, because people want to protect their club. But you protect your club with integrity. You must show integrity in everything you do. And I believe that when your personality is involved, you must protect it. So it's not just letting people, you must, like I say again, I mean blood against football. <coughs> For me, it's you cannot compromise both situations. I cannot just watch football. Before, I used to go to stadium with my wife, with my children. Yeah. But these days, you don't see me. I go alone. <laughs> My children, all of them, love Sakras. So my wife loves Sakras. So even my mother-in-law loves Sakras. So sometimes I pack them in a vehicle. We're about eight of, them, eight of us. And but these days, when I'm going, they say, Daddy, bye. And I go. But I think it is not a good signal for us. We should be able to educate the public, tell them information. They want to think that they should not know. We should be able to manage it ourselves and be able to discuss it on the top so that we could be able to meet and be able to analyze the situation, then get to resolve it. And then for our brothers, all our colleagues who are managing, especially, you notice all examples that have been mentioned, you notice it's coming from a particular region. If it's not Brecom, it's this, if it's not that. I'm being, sorry, I'm being factual. I don't want to, you know, pretend maybe because I don't go around, but I'm, I'm, a, I'm a supporter of the club. I've gone, I've seen incidents like this. But if you notice, if it's not in Brecom, it's in Golden City Park. If it's not this, it's this. I mean, we should not continue in such situation because we're all friends. We're all brothers. I have a brother who is break, supposed break home. I have somebody who supposed break home Chelsea. Doesn't mean we have to fight because of football. It doesn't give any reason for us to do that. So I think that that attitude that Sana or that this is how we do it here, that we should take it away. So those are the words of Frank Nelson in Wokolo. He is a board member of Accra Hearts Vogue. And of course, uh, uh, recent news is that Adriana Stars say they will protest 
the decision to give them an indefinite ban from the use of their Nanaichi Mambedu Park. Uh, that's their home venue. And uh, they will comply with the ban by the Ghana FA, but still they will protest. And uh, these are developments coming after the FA handed out various punitive measures to clubs whose uh, fans were engaged in violence in one way or the other. Uh, send in a text message on this subject and more, which we're about to discuss here on Sports Today on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. Uh, right now, we want to throw focus on uh, Turkey because the uh, black satellites will be playing the next World Cup and making an attempt to win another World Cup competition under the same coach as Selas Bobotete. And uh, this is after Ghana finished as uh, silver winners, uh, silver medal winners at the uh, African uh, tournament. And uh, Ghana will be playing at the next World Cup in the next World Cup in uh, Turkey. And of course, uh, if you'd want to follow the Black Satellites and go and support them uh, with all your might and your physical presence, then you would have to take a listen to what we're about to discuss here. Uh, Target 100 uh, Travel and Tours, a major partner of Joy Sports, is ensuring that various packages are done for individuals who want to travel to Turkey to view this uh, World Cup uh, tournament, the FIFA World Youth Championship in Turkey, which comes off uh, next month. And Target 100 Travel and Tours is represented by their general manager, George. Uh, thank you very much, George, for joining us uh, here in the thank studio. Now, um, tell us, uh, Target 100 Travel and Tours is uh, putting together packages for fans who want to go and uh, support Ghana yes. at the uh, World Cup in, in Turkey. Yes. Uh, Nat, I would say, start by saying good morning to your listeners. Uh, what we, we have put out together, it's a comprehensive package that will take care of... Uh, <coughs> Anybody wanting to, to go to Turkey to participate in this uh, uh, World Cup. Uh, w the product, we've learned about, about five products, five okay. different products, um, starting from uh, entry visas. I see. The entry visas, the, the hotel, the air ticket, there's a round trip in and out, your travel insurance, because as, as you prepare for all the beauties of life, you should also begin to, to think about the uncertainties that can, yeah. might come with it. You yeah. know? So what we've done is to also you know, complement whatever package we have with the travel insurance so that when, when you are there and maybe after the first match, you feel like, ah, I don't, I'm not feeling too well, you can have access to a proper medical facility that can, that can take care of you. You know, whilst, whilst you, you, you progress with the tournament. Mm, you know. And then also on top of that, what we also done is to arrange a city tour of Istanbul for people who want to know much about Istanbul. So we have people who give you a city layout of Istanbul, you know, talking about the major factories in Istanbul, you know, the major electronics, talking about the laptops, the LCDs, where they are produced from, talking about the apparel. You know, so it is so all of this will be aside the supporting Ghana, you know, in the, the group games as, and also if Ghana eventually qualifies to the final stages. Exactly. So there's a lot more to do in Turkey. And now also, in addition to the package, we have also procured the first three match tickets for you. So you have your first match ticket, your second match ticket, and your third match ticket. These have all been added or included in a package that, you know, you are paying for. I see. Yeah. I see. If you just joined us, uh, this is an interview with Target 100 Travel and Tours, who are an official partner of Joy Sports and also official travel partner for the upcoming FIFA Under-20 World Cup, where Ghana is making a second bid at the title. Remember that Ghana won it in 2009 for the first time and for the first time for Africa as well under the same coach who is going to lead the team this time around to this very major and big tournament. Target 100 Tours is represented by George who is the, um, the general manager. He's uh, outlining the package uh, that uh, has been put together for fans. Now, uh, before we round up the conversation, tell me about you know how much it's going to cost uh, the ordinary fan to get into Turkey. All right. Now, uh that's that's a good question. Uh, we started off with a with a promotion of thousand eight hundred dollars, thousand eight hundred dollars. But that slots have all been taken. What we have now is two thousand dollars, which is still you know <laughs> a reasonable price for all of those products that I've mentioned to you right now. You know, so what we what we charging people now is two thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah, the thousand eight which started off as a promotion has all been taken. You know, we don't have any 
space for thousand eight anymore. What we have is two thousand dollars that can take care of all of those that that I've mentioned to you. I see. Yeah. And the response has been amazing. You were telling me that uh, later uh, earlier uh, this this morning. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you know. I see. And um, so there are very big indications that loads and loads and hundreds of Ghanaians are going to. Yeah, man. The you see, the interesting thing is that people who are asking me, "Are you sure all of that is for two thousand dollars?" I say, yeah, all of that is for $2,000. Well, our contribution to the national team is just that we should put up something together that will not be, you know, too much profit-driven. You know, so that's what we've done, you know. So if you look at all the breaks that I'm giving you, it will cost you $2,000 to get you there. And we are saying that not just to go and watch football, but to also give you exposure of Istanbul. And the city layout of Istanbul. All right, you know, sure. Yeah, so, so um, all right. So, yeah. um, what 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 phone numbers can you be reached on, and where's your location, just in case people want to uh, come and uh, go and support the Black yeah. Satellite? Uh, in Accra, we we are located on the Sprinters Road, um, directly opposite the Texco Market, um, and the number to reach us on zero two four three one 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 three four two zero two four three one 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 three four two and right. also in takradi you can contact the sky fm sky fm registration is ongoing there if you're in kufu Yudra, you can uh, go to imac fm the registration is ongoing there too and if you are also in uh, takwa you can go to pure fm pure fm too are also doing the registration you know so yes. and then in kumasi in kumasi we have a branch office there we have a branch office there at amokum Kumasi Amokum, Virginia Road, mm. uh, Magnet Travels. You contact Magnet Travels, Virginia Road, Amokum. Yeah. And uh, there are many fans in Kumasi who want to go and watch this tournament, so I'm very sure that uh, we'll be having a lot of our fans who will be going from Kumasi as yes, well. Yes, but anyway, yeah. George, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, let's hope that the Black Star uh, Starlets bring us, uh, satellites, I beg your pardon, bring us glory from uh, Turkey. <laughs> thank you too. All thank right, you. sure. So um, we are still here on Sports Today on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. We do some more, and uh, this time around we focus on the Ghana League Clubs Association, which has clearly stated that they will only uh, determine which clubs will play in the um, upcoming Top Four tournament and uh, the very prestigious Presidents Cup as well. And um, the this uh, is coming on the back of uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko's decision not to play until certain major demands are met. So Isaac Kumsin says uh, Gauka has not officially received any letter for, uh, from Kotoko stating their intent to withdraw from the uh, President's Cup. So uh, this is from Gauka and uh, Piol uh, surely um, they will have the final decision of determining which teams will be playing in the uh, President's Cup. And also Accra Hearts of Oak uh, want to uh, challenge Kumasi Asante Kotoko for the services of um, Yakubu Mohammed. And um, Accra Hearts of Oak want to take a major, major advantage of the, uh, uh, the off-season to ensure that uh, some of the finest players are signed on by the club. Remember that uh, the man Mahatma Otu has already been signed and uh, Yakubu Mohammed, uh, the striker, uh, who is being sought after by uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko and um, is, is somebody who is under their radar. So let's see how it turns. Who wins the battle for the Ash Gold uh, striker? Uh, we'll see how it turns out for Accra Hearts of Oak and Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Now, ex-Kotoko coach uh, Abdul Razak, the golden boy, one-time uh, African player of the year, is desperate to return to the local Premier League some 10 years after guiding them to a Premier League title. And the future of current coach uh, Masiu Didi Dramani has been, uh, uh, you know, said to be very uncertain. And, um, and um, many are speculating that he may be going out of the club, but well... Let's see how it turns out. A former coach of the team wants to return to uh, uh, his status quo. And, of course, we concentrate on Liberty Professionals. And uh, Saban Kwe, who is a long-time team manager of the club, has uh, confirmed his departure from the club. Remember that Saban Kwe um, was appointed the team manager of the Black Stars team. And... Uh,
and uh, he is uh, somebody who's been nominated. He's been, been taking up, he's took, uh, he took up the role, I beg your pardon, of the uh, team manager of the Black Stars team, and the responsibilities are such that he may not be able to handle all the two. So Sabankwe bids farewell to Liberty Professionals officially. Now, um, Tema Youth has lost a protest uh, against Ashanti Gold, and uh, this uh, claim that Malika Kowa was unqualified to play their match on April 17, 2013, in the Globe Premier League. And the case of Tema Youth is that the player was unqualified to play the match because he had received three yellow cards. But the Desbury Committee um, is of the opinion that on a true and proper interpretation of Articles 29 and 39, um, the GFA is required to inform the clubs in writing upon the first and second offences of the player. And there's no evidence that this was done, such that the third offence could be made a suspension. So this has been thrown out by the DC of the Ghana Football Association. Now, the Liberian FA has also postponed uh, an uh, earlier scheduled three-nation tournament, which was going to precede qualifiers for the African Nations Championship. This will mean that the Black uh, Stars, the local Black Stars team, will have to go into the qualifier without any major matches against uh, the teams that were built to play in the in the tournament and of course it was going to be Ghana Guinea and Liberia playing in that invitational three nation tournament so uh, we have been uh, reached by uh, the uh, Ghana Football Association's uh, spokesperson Ibrahim Sani Dara he'll be bringing us up to speed on uh, the development now Sani thank you very much for joining us on sports today morning Matt. Now, um, after this, uh, you know, cancellation of this tournament, uh, what then will the Ghana FA turn to in terms of preparing the team adequately for the upcoming qualifier against Benin? Well, um, we have immediately started talks with some countries about playing uh, the, the local black stars in friendlies. Uh, we have not reached far with those talks, so we would be unable to even disclose the identities of the two countries. But yes, we are ensuring that even though this tournament is, is out of the way, we can you know, speak to other countries and see if we can get some matches to play. Now, Sani, what kind of effect uh, has this had uh, on the preparation plan of the, the local Black Stars? Uh, it's badly knocked us, knocked us off our patch. One, it's badly, you know, hit our plans. One, we... we, we switched the dates for our league matches and we're hoping that you know uh, with this opportunity that the league could go on the break so immediately the gfa has asked the premier league board and the mt and fa cup committee to quickly readjust their plans for the league uh, which i believe by this morning will be finalized then um you know, the coaches were hoping, desperately hoping that they'll get some matches to play before uh, we, we play Benin in that qualifier. But that said, at least it's given us some few days for the players to come together, to train together and, uh, and prepare. That has affected us quite badly. All right. Uh, Sunny, thank you very much for joining us uh, on the show today. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ibrahim Sanidara is the uh, spokesperson for the Ghana Football Association here on Sports Today on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV. Keep the text messages coming in in a bit. I'll be sharing uh, some of them with you as well as we look at uh, how well Ghana can perform at the African Beach Soccer Championship as they play against big names like Morocco. Uh, you know, Senegal, and of course, Madagascar from the group stage. Okay, we now go to uh, Coach Jose Mourinho, who uh, is advising uh, Chelsea to keep uh, Michael Essien. Now, remember that uh, Michael Essien is on a, a, a season's a loan spell at Real Madrid and could decide to return to the club or go elsewhere or probably stay at Real Madrid, uh, depending on what happens. Remember that Essien's contract with Chelsea expires in 2015 and he could move uh, for around uh, 5 million, significantly less than the 24 million uh, that the Blues paid to sign him from Lyon in 2005, which at the time made him the most expensive African player in the history of the game. So Michael Essien, uh, he surely is still in Mourinho's plans, and uh, of course Mourinho is said to be moving towards Chelsea. And of course uh, we focus on Andre Dede Ayew, who 
clearly is also going to stay on at Olympic Marseille, uh, despite the many offers that have been flown at him uh, for his very good performances. Now, many speculations were rife that he was going to go towards uh, the English Premier League, uh, make a move from France to England, but the player seems to be staying put at um, Olympic Marseille, where surely the club will be playing in the Champions League next season. And of course, uh, Christian Achu is still reveling in a lot of glory because uh, he uh, and his team, FC Porto, have won the Premier League in uh, Portugal. Porto were presented with the trophy on Sunday following their 2-0 win over Pascos uh, de Ferreira. And uh, it was also a third championship in a row in, uh, and a ninth in 11 years. Uh, FC Porto growing from strength to strength. And of course, uh, Christian Achu, a key part of the success story at FC Porto. And of course, uh, Ghanaian defender uh, David Adi is also in focus because uh, he says that uh, Victoria Gumares' club are, are uh, determined to win their first uh, Portuguese Cup final against uh, Benfica. Now, the Congress uh, will be making the latest attempt to win the converted trophy this Sunday after emerging runners up on five previous occasions. And uh, Gumares have excelled this term, finishing sit in the Portuguese top flight where FC Porto are reigning champions. Of course, we throw focus on uh, David Akam, who is uh, having a, a good time at Helsingborg. And uh, he, remember, is playing at the club where uh, Anthony Annan used to play his uh, football. Ghana striker David Akam is in a joyous mood after hitting a brace to propel Helsingborg back to the summit of the Swedish top division. So uh, good news for David Akam, and uh, this probably will get... Coach Kwesi Apia to look in his direction some more, especially with the big assignments coming up in June. And of course, uh, Kumoji uh, is also very, very delighted with uh, how the season has gone for him at uh, Genk uh, in the Swedish uh, Top Division League. So Bernard Komoji has uh, ruled missing out on the Belgian Professional League title but insists that qualifying to play in the Europa League for the second consecutive season brings some joy. And uh, Bernard Komoji is one of, players, uh, one of many players who are looking forward to uh, sealing places in Coach Kwesi Apia's uh, team. And of course we focus on the man Derek Boating who has made a move to... Uh, Fulham in the English Premier League. Uh, Derek Boating finally joining uh, them at Craven Cottage after uh, spells in Spain, Greece, Germany, Israel, and of course uh, Sweden. So the 30 year old player we, uh, hopes to make a major, major impact at Craven Cottage. And, of course, uh, Monaco uh, in France look forward to uh, putting up a very big bid, uh, uh, 15 million euro for Kevin Prince Boating. And uh, that is a very, very big question. Kevin Prince Boating, is he ready to leave AC Milan? Well, it tilts towards a no, but how can this uh, be possible? Uh, is that possible? Can any club drag him away from AC Milan where he seems to be enjoying a lot of goodwill among the fans and uh, enjoy some good playing time as well? Big question mark there, and you can send a text message through 1760. And, uh, of course, we'll be doing some more here on the local scene. You are still here on Sports Today on the Joy Sports channel on Multi-TV. Uh, we'll do a round of commercials, and when we return, we do some more stories here on the show. There we are, and of course, uh, we'll be telling you about Ghana midfielder Alfred Duncan, who will arrive late to join the Ghana under-20 teammates, uh, as he's expected to play part of Livorno's promotional playoffs uh, in Italy. The 20-year-old Inter Milan youngster is among players named by the Black Satellites. Coach Sella started to prepare for the FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Turkey. And now we will also tell you about um, how... Uh, Injury has ruled out Espanol Whiskey Paul Quay, who cannot play for the Ghana Under-20 squad due to a foot injury. Now, the 17-year-old has been ruled out of action for five weeks after picking up the injury 
And uh, this was why he was in action for Espanol B side, Segunda, uh, in the Segunda B some two uh, weeks ago. So now let's do a bit of cycling. And of course, the Cowbell Bike Tour is on. It surely is going to be a great moment uh, if every fan lines up on the streets, the various uh, cities, uh, you know, where the Cowbell Bike Tour will be passing through in eight regions in the country. Record number of uh, bikers, record number of teams. And of course, it surely is going to be one big, big tournament. So uh, we'll be looking forward to it. But uh, Brekum Arsenal is currently uh, playing a tournament in Amsterdam, uh, the youth team of Breku Arsenal uh, are playing that tournament. Uh, let's go over to Aman Ralph Jamra, who is with the team in uh, Amsterdam, and will be bringing us up to speed on how well the team has done so far. Thank you very much, Ralph, for joining us on the show. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we are not able to reach Ralph on the phone right now. We'll uh, bring you that story later on. But uh, Didier Drogba, uh, he is uh, happy to stay at Turkey, especially playing for Galatasaray, despite uh, concerns about uh, racist chants. And, of course, uh, racism is something that European football has been dealing with on a very big and very unfortunate scale, uh, in, especially in association football and in uh, the various leagues. And, of course, while all of this happens, DDA6 uh, is uh, ready to quit the Hawks of Togo. This means that uh, all the experienced players will be staying away from the team. So now let's go and take a listen to the defending champion of the Cowbell Bike Tour. His name is Henry Tetejangma. He looks ahead to the start of this year's edition, which begins on May 27. Let's take a listen to him. Is that when we are on the road, we have to plan with this experience, maybe. On our training, sometimes when we are going, maybe I can stop and draw one of the boys back. I will just told him he should wait so that the bunch will go. So that we we'll make sure that we we'll fight time so that we can catch our bunch. So in our training, we have a training towards that. Maybe it can happen on a race, so we have to train towards that. And and if you don't if you don't catch them, uh, do you suffer any penalties or anything? No, by this year events, we are going according to time. So if you come back to the time, unfortunately they will brought you back. The sweeper is is the last car. So you have speed limit, you have to go. So if you come, I told us that you are doing forty kilometers yeah. for the sweeper. Yeah. Okay. So if you can make that forty kilometers. Automatically, the sweeper have to pick you. And if the sweeper pick you, it means the next day you can ride. It means you are disqualified. Yeah. But is it is it is it is it fair? I mean, if if you are riding and uh, maybe just one day you have a problem, <laughs> I mean they should allow you to continue. I know. At first they have been doing. It. For now, 2013, they said no. They are going to change everything. So if you can make. 40 kilometers and above, it means you are not fit to the top. Henry Tetejangma, he makes us look forward to the Cowbell Bike Tour 2013. Remember, Joy Sports is a major partner, and you have to watch this channel because we're going to bring you every single moment of the historic Cowbell Bike Tour. Remember, it's assuming an international dimension next year. Now, let us go into Europe and build up to the UEFA Champions League final on Saturday. Remember, it's on big screen at the Aviation Social Center, the Hits FN Rep Your Jersey event. And um, we will be looking at uh, what's happening there. But before we go into what's happening in Europe, uh, there's, interesting, uh, there's an interesting development on Oscar Pistorius, the Blade Runner, who is at the center of uh, a murder trial of his uh, former girlfriend, Pistorius, 26, is on bill after being charged with the murder of his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp, but, uh, com uh, but can't compete before uh, his court case is heard. But he is uh, not going to compete again for the rest of the year 2013. And he was arrested for shooting Steenkamp dead on uh, Valentine's Day, 14 February, and has not competed ever since. 
and uh, he had not been invited to compete in London's uh, anniversary games with UK Athletics Chairman Ed Warner saying he did not want the meeting to turn into a media circus. So uh, Oscar Pistorius goes on and fights in the courts to prove his innocence if he is, um, you know, so that he can move on with his career in athletics. Now we go into Europe. Like I said, let's now listen to the man, now Oliver Kahn. Remember his hair, remember his eyes and his eyebrows. He was a great goalkeeper and he was imposed for uh, Bayern Munich the last time they won, of course. Emmanuel, uh, Samuel Osaiko for of Ghana was also there when they won it the last time. He's been talking about the experience of winning the UEFA Champions League. Two thousand and one, and in the city of La Scala, a footballing opera would take place at the Giuseppe Miazza. It's the year of the third final of the European Champions Club's Cup to be played in Milan, with the showpiece event pitting FC Bayern München against Valencia. The two clubs had experienced final heartache as runners-up in each of the previous two seasons. Both were keen to avoid a similar disappointment in Italy. Well, we were under a lot of pressure as a team, as FC Bayern. I think it was the peak of the team. And if we hadn't won it against Valencia in Milan in 2001, I think it would have become difficult. Because top players like Stefan Effenberg, Giovanni Elber and Vicente Lizarazu had already reached their top form. And after that, it would have become more difficult to win it. It was actually the last chance for that generation. But we had to face Valencia, and they'd lost the Champions League final the year before. So for them, it was also their last chance to win the Champions League. On a night of high drama, it would be Valencia who would strike first after only two minutes through their captain, Gaith Comendieta. Aptly, the goal came from the penalty spot, with that thing continuing throughout the match. Stefan Effenberg would equalise five minutes into the second half in similar fashion. And with no more goals in the 90 minutes or in extra time, spot kicks would ultimately then decide who would be crowned kings of the continent. I try to anticipate where the players would hit their penalty. I also did those typical psychological games which take place between the penalty taker and the goalkeeper. But that penalty shootout really looked like Bayern Munich wouldn't win it. Anderson missed his, Paolo Sergio missed two, so I had to say three penalties for us to win the final. And it's not like I was known for being a penalty specialist as a goalkeeper. But I had no choice other than to save those three penalties. And it was a performance of strong desire, of great anticipation. And of course, what you need as a goalkeeper, to move the right way. And that is luck. The decisive moment would come at 4-all in the shootout. Both teams had missed twice. But after Thomas Linker scored for Bayern, the onus was on Mauricio Pellegrino to keep Valencia's hopes of a first European title alive. He'd seen his penalty saved by Khan. And in dramatic fashion, Bayern were champions of Europe for the fourth time in their history and for the first time in a quarter of a century. So that final was really a very special, dramatic and exciting one. And I remember, when we won the penalty shootout, and Canizares, the Valencia goalkeeper, how he laid down on the goal line and started to cry. I could feel for him, as I experienced something similar in 1999. What stays is that feeling, the feeling of having won the title. That feeling right after that missed or saved penalty. Those are moments you never forget. Celebrating is nice, but it's not what stays with you.
So there, Oliver Kahn, the man who is definitely a legend in uh, Bayern Munich. Of course, another man who's a big legend in Bayern Munich is Franz Beckenbauer, the uh, Kaiser. And uh, he has also been talking about uh, Bayern's dominance in the Europe in the 70s when he was obviously very active. <laughs> It's May 1974, and West German football is in the midst of a golden era. On the international stage, the country was months away from winning the FIFA World Cup. To add to its UEFA European Championship crown from two years before, while a period of continental success was about to begin at club level for FC Bayern München. Led by captain Franz Beckenbauer, they'd reached the final of the European Champions Club's Cup for the first time. That was an era for Bayern Munich that actually only lasted for a short while. It started at the beginning of the 1970s. It was over with the World Cup in 1974. But during that period, we became German champions three times consecutively, 1972, 1973, 1974. We won the Champions League three times. Six players from FC Bayern became European champions and world champions. I think it was the most successful era, not only of FC Bayern, but also of German football. Bayern's first appearance in the showpiece event would prove to be historic. Club Atletico de Madrid were their opponents, with a 1-1 draw sending the final to a replay for the first time in the competition's history. It was heartbreak for the Spanish side, who had led until Hans-Georg Schwarzenbeck equalised in the last minute of extra time. The first win was of course the most important, because we drew in the first game. It was nil-nil in extra time. Then Atletico Madrid took the lead, and we scored the equaliser in the last minute. We were very lucky. With Brussels again the setting for the replay just 48 hours later, Bayern would make the most of their late escape. Uli Hoeneß would open and finish the scoring in a 4-0 success, either side of two brilliant finishes from Gert Müller. For the first time in their history, FC Bayern München were the kings of Europe, with this success the start of a dynasty for the Bavarian club, who would retain their crown in each of the next two seasons. Well, the Champions League trophy, or back then the European Champions Cup, is something special. It's the highest trophy that you can win at club football level. And when you hold that trophy in your hands, it's something special, of course. And of course, uh, Atletico Madrid, who are defending Europa League champions, have held a soccer clinic in Singapore. Kids in Asia want to learn how to play football. At their first workout on Tuesday, Los Roji Blancos were up against 130 youngsters from the Singapore Olympic Foundation in a charity match. Star striker Radamel Falcao has been the subject of transfer speculation ever since the La Liga club won the Copa del Rey last week, beating neighbours Real Madrid in the final. The Colombian striker has attracted attention from two English clubs, Manchester City and Chelsea, as well as French club Monaco, as the season winds down in Europe. British media reported that City have agreed to pay Falcao's contract out for a record £54 million, while Atleti have agreed to support Falcao's move. They have passed on the ultimate decision to the player himself. The Copa del Rey winners will also play an exhibition match against a Singapore selection on Wednesday. Okay, and of course, uh, Tony Pulis is also going to leave. Uh, Tony Pulis is going to leave as uh, Stoke City manager, and uh, we are not going to see his services in uh, England. Uh, we are yet to see where exactly he'll be headed towards after this move away from Stoke City. Meeting with club chairman Peter Coates on Tuesday, Tony Pulis has opted to leave his position as manager of Stoke City. Having not only guided Stoke to the Premier League, but successfully keeping them up for five years, it brings to an end his second spell at the club, which has seen him in charge for seven years. Stoke finished 13th this season, 
but did flirt with relegation at points. Well, uh, we are rounding it up gradually, and uh, the striker Andy Carroll is also yet to decide on his future. Remember, a transfer window is approaching gradually, and we need to see who goes where. West Ham United agreed a fee with Liverpool on Tuesday for striker Andy Carroll. The Englishman is yet to decide whether he wants to join the Hammers permanently. It is understood that the Londoners will match the asking price of around £15 million. However, the 24-year-old is unsure of a permanent move ahead of the 2014 World Cup. Despite an injury ridding him out for December, Carroll scored seven times during the season. Of course, and we also bring you highlights from the IAAF uh, meet in Shanghai. IAAF will challenge moved on to Beijing and the Bird's Nest for the fifth leg of the 2013 series. Proceedings got underway with the women's 100-meter hurdles, where Kelly Wells and Virginia Crawford headlined the field. The race was, however, dominated by 2012 Olympic bronze medalist Wells, who claimed the win in a time of 12.86 seconds. Former Olympic champion LeSean Merritt returned to the scene of his greatest triumph to take part in the men's 200 meters. His main rival was expected to be Belgian Jonathan Borley, but in the end Merritt showed his class and again reminded the world of his talent after the disappointment of London 2012. Alison Felix got her season underway at the Bird's Nest. The IAAF 2012 Athlete of the Year didn't disappoint, claiming the women's 200 meters in a time of 22.36 seconds. As expected, the long-distance events were headlined by the African athletes. Kenya's Harun Lagat was expected to be the pacemaker in a field which included African record holder Bremen Kiproto. It was, however, to be a race to forget for both men as Lagat failed to finish, while Kiproto finished in second behind countryman Hilary Yego. Kenya dominated the podium with Gilbert Kirui coming home in third. The women's 1,500 meters was also dominated by the East Africans, and yet again it was a Kenya 1-2-3, as Eunice Sum timed her race to perfection to finish ahead of Mary Kuria and Nelly Chepkoskai, who pushed Sum right till the finish. South Africa's Robert Oersteisen was in action in the javelin throw. He, however, finished in fifth, with his best throw landing on 77.59 meters. But all eyes fell on the 100-meter finals, and the women's race was headlined by Jamaican Sharon Simpson's false start. Nigeria's blessing Okagbari capitalized to cap a memorable meet for the Africans. What a finish that was. Okagbari, what a fantastic talent she is. The star act in the men's field, Justin Gatlin, also didn't disappoint. Gatlin beginning to get into his stride. He's beginning to chase him down. Rogers is holding on, but here comes Gatlin. Takes it over the line, what a good effort, 9.90. And 9.90 it was in the heats for Justin Gatlin. Let's see how he's been able to do in the uh, final stages. A text message here says, I want to know if Kotoko was selected for um, the President's Cup before they are saying they don't want to take part. Akpa in Bechim says that. Well, uh, the Galka did not select, uh, he has not selected any teams yet. It would be a great honor to have Mourinho back at Chelsea and also happy to see Derek Boating in the EPL next season. Chelsea all the way from Bonnie Young, a.k.a. Pincoat. Thank you very much. Now, it is very good for hearts of Vogue that Mahatma Otu has signed one more year. This is by Ch Tijani Nasawasi. I think Team Ghana will live up uh, and above their under underdog status and match their experienced opponents. This is from Akpa. Thank you very much uh, for all those text messages. And uh, let's do a wrap of international golf news as well. European captain Paul McGinley announced on Tuesday that he will have three wildcard picks for next year's Ryder Cup at Glen Eagles. His predecessor, Jose Maria Lozabal, had just two selections to make for the 2012 match against the United States when he selected Nicola Kolsatz and Ian Poulter. After a lot of consideration and a lot of thought, went into it and I looked, looked at so many different areas and went through all the statistics and uh, the history of Ryder Cups and uh, what worked, what didn't work, um, and along my, my heartfelt view that uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, I remain, everything remained in place that Jose Maria had, uh, his criteria, with one exception, I will be having three picks rather than two. So there will be, firstly, it will be four off the European Tour Auto Merit, and five off the World Rankings, and then three picks. And that is the criteria I feel is best going to result in the strongest 
hopefully the strongest uh, 12 players representing Europe in the Ryder Cup next year. The Europeans will take on a Tom Watson-led American team at Glen Eagles in Scotland at the end of September 2014, looking to win a third consecutive Ryder Cup and a sixth in seven. A row between Sergio Garcia and Tiger Woods that erupted at the Players' Championship earlier this month does not seem any closer to being settled. The spat occurred when Garcia accused Woods of gamesmanship. The world number one angered Garcia by preparing for his own shot as the Spaniard was about to play an approach shot. Garcia says they'll never be friends. Obviously, you can't like everybody. Uh, I think that there's people that you connect with and there's people that you don't. And... Um, you know, it's pretty much as simple as that. So I think that, uh, you know, he's, he doesn't need me in his life. I don't need him in mine. And, you know, let's move on and let's keep doing what we do. The chances of the two playing together again are pretty good. Garcia says he'll be completely professional if and when that happens. It is what it is. Uh, it's fine. I mean, it doesn't mean that, that I cannot play with him. Um, so... It's just, uh, it's just another player, obviously a, a, a good player, but, you know, it's just when I'm playing with someone that I enjoy, uh, obviously there's a bit more talking uh, going around. Uh, when you play with someone that you don't uh, fancy as, as much, it's just a little bit quieter, I guess. Golf's governing bodies on Tuesday announced that they will ban the anchoring of putters from 2016 in a move which will please traditionalists but could lead to a split in the game among the professional ranks. Garcia says it won't affect him. Fortunately for me, it doesn't affect me because uh, I did use it for a little bit, but it, I never really felt that comfortable with it. So uh, I think it's going to be a, a bit of a bother for some of, some of the other guys, but I think they'll, they'll figure out a way to, uh, to get their, their game around. Well, 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 uneasy moments for the big-name golfers. Uh, let's see how they're able to resolve that and all the uh, little cold wars that are going on on the golf course. Well, that's how we run it up today. Uh, we'll bring you more updates on Wednesday. And uh, you stay tuned here to the Joy Sports channel. There's more coming up uh, on Friday, I beg your pardon. Uh, we'll be bringing you uh, the Friday edition of the show. Thanks to the whole production team. Thanks for you out there for watching. Rep Your Jersey is on at the Aviation Social Center in Accra as we watch on big screen by Munich versus Borussia Dortmund. It's the race of the German machines. Who wins it? Big question indeed. That'll be